never depart from the Lord. And I meant it. Because when a situation is impossible, you know with your heart. When you sense danger, when you sense death, you know it in your heart. That's why you say, Lord, if you save me, I'll give you my life. Because you know the danger. If you're not in danger, you won't say it. Probably. It is the Holy Spirit who starts to show you what a desert you are. And what a desert you live in. And that is how people get saved. If they are not, if they are not aware of the desert, how can they repent? To what are they going to be saved? From what are they going to be saved? They don't need a savior. But when I was very young, I was sure that this world is a place nobody wants to be born in. You just have to see a, a bit of television and you are convinced that the whole world, not just Malta, is a desert. So I'm sounding very pessimistic, right? <laughs> But truly, it will become a pessimistic picture. But the Lord is doing that to save people. The Lord is allowing this to happen, to save people's lives eternally, eternally. So in the 1970s, how was Malta like? You know, in the 1970s, the Malta had the welfare state. Am I right, Kenny? If they say something wrong, you can you can tell me. No, this is because Ke Kenny knows the history better than me. Okay, the, the welfare in Malta was starting. Malta was always colonized until 1964. Um, so th this was not a free country. We learned to live with people who were our bosses and our masters and to, to serve. Really, what changed Malta? was the, our independence. We, we, we became independent after World War II um, in 1964, much after World War II. And we started to function. We started to think with our own brains. We started to make the laws. We started to take control. Uh, hospitals were built, and people were given houses and plots. And it was a, a time of hope, financial, economical hope. But there was something that I experienced in that time, and that was that the faith that people had in God, I felt was diminishing. And the reason is because I lived among three generations. There was a generation of my grandmother, there was a generation of my mother, and there was my generation. And we all lived in one uh, small town, in one village. My family was, was just spread around four blocks, basically. And today, my children, my children don't have this. It was a luxury. When we were young, we would run from house to house. We leave my mother's house, we go to grandma's house. If grandma gets angry, we go to great aunt's house. If great aunt's house gets angry, we go to the other auntie's house, you know? And it was, it was really good. Everybody knew each other. And it was a time when uh, the children were the children of the community. I still remember this in my town. People, adults can talk to you and tell you, don't do that. Nowadays, they don't do it because they say, it's somebody else's child, right? But this time was a beautiful time for me to grow in, you know? Because the community was very close. Even going to Valletta was a big thing for us. We have to plan to go to Valletta. Do you remember this, Kevin? We have to plan. So my father would say, wow, you did well in your exam, so something take you to Valletta. Today, if I tell my children, you did well in your exam, I take you to Valletta. They say, you just tell me to, to Valletta? <laughs> That's why you're going to take me to Valletta? Do you know what my friends get when they pass their exam? I, no, they get a mobile if they pass their exam. I'm like, ah. It was a, a fun time. The, the island was still not developed, you know? We used to run along the streets. Very few cars. Nowadays my son can't, you know, he got a skateboard a few years ago. Where is he going to use a skateboard? You go under this, you... Mommy, where do we go? I don't know where you're going to use that skateboard. We'll have to go to the other side of the island and find a park for you to use the skateboard. I'm just telling you how we grew up. Hmm? And uh, my mother and father were 
sort of the first generation who were tasting what it means to have welfare. Just imagine in the Philippines, the government says, okay, until tertiary education, until your children finish school, everything is free. What will you do? Wow. Right? I was that daughter who was brought up by parents who were saying, wow, how children can finish tertiary education for free. Wow. It was not long ago. It looks like Malta has been rich for long. It, it was not long ago. So we went to school proud that we are going to finish tertiary education for free. Yes. My daughter. Huh? My daughter, the, the, the daughter or the son, this is the pride that they had, my, the generation of my father had. They're going to be lawyers and doctors, wow! It was, it was a, a cultural thing, it changed people. It, it upgraded them, promoted them. But you see, I was a child back then, and I was uh, the only girl among many boys. All my cousins were boys, it was so boring. Now our house was all about making bombs, for example, how to make a bomb. <laughs> and how to catch cats and hang them and throw water on, you know, they were still in this thing. And I was not interested in this evil stuff, you know. So my mother used to send me to my grandmother because I, I think I didn't really fit in that environment, you know, all the time playing football and I just, you know, I got disinterested. And my grandmother was a widow. She was, she just lived across the street. She was a widow. She was blind. I never remembered my grand grandmother going out of her house. She, she was homebound until, until she died, actually. Um, but so I became sort of the carer of my grandmother. The good thing was that um, my grandmother's house was very big, so I had space, I had time, and my grandmother's house was always full of um, women, older women, right? You know what happens when you are around older women? They feed you, <laughs> they give you pocket money, <laughs> they fix your hair, and I was just loved. I was really, really spoiled by these women. My great aunt would come and sleep with us uh, in, 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 the, in the house. My auntie who lived in Nashar, she, her husband used to work abroad, so she would come and sleep with us, and we were like full of women in this house. And in the morning, everybody goes, Marcel, do you want hot chocolate? <laughs> Marcel, do you want? Of course, I had to go shopping many times, many times. Sometimes my grandma would send me shopping three times. I forgot something. I forgot something. I for but then she would give me a tip, okay? And I have one sweet. <laughs> it's funny, but you know what? This is my heritage, and none of my cousins or brothers actually got this. I was the, the, I was the only one who enjoyed this, because I was the eldest girl. Okay, it goes with a price. If it's cleaning day, and we clean a lot, we clean every week. We have to clean. Even the chandeliers have to be cleaned every week. It was terrible. It was terrible. We cleaned a lot, and I got my fair share of responsibilities. When my cousins were playing football, I was cleaning. But I got the tips, and I got the chocolate, and I got the, you know, I got the, I got loved. My grandmother was. She didn't know anything about the Bible, nothing. She, when she was young and she went to church, Mass was in Latin. So she, they didn't even know what the priest was saying. They go, blah, 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 Amen, they get up, blah, 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 sit down, Amen. She didn't know. But she loved the Lord. My grandma loved the Lord. And she would wake up and say, let's pray. She would pick her rosary beads, huh? Now this, this is a blasphemy to pray with rosary beads. But this is all they knew. They didn't know anything else. This is the only way they could express their love to the Lord because that's how they were taught. And so you ask me, how do you know that she loved the Lord? I know she loved the Lord because I heard things from her mouth that I didn't hear other people 
who could read, who could write, who could understand the Bible, who could go to church. They didn't say what my grandmother said. They didn't do what she did. And so by her deeds,